The guy just got back from the kitchen, you hurt? Look at this shit that I made. This is what you call a fucking whack ass meal. Oh, it's hot still. Oh, look, look, look. Ignore the gay ass plate. Look, look at this shit. Look, look at this white shit right here. This is that cornmeal. This is that whole milk. This is that uh, brown raw sugar. It's shitty as fuck. Uh, this is that sea salt? So I know y'all white ass Brahmin niggas love that shit. Uh. What else is this shit at? It's got vanilla extract, some cinnamon. Th this shit is... This shit is whack as fuck, man, but... Damn. Should I do in a stove, nigga? Anyway, I was thinking about Darwinian evolution. And Darwinian evolution is pretty interesting because we can apply it in an economic way, a political way, just so many ways, in so many directions. It reminds me of Nietzsche in a way because it's mostly used in an egoist direction. And at the lowest levels, the most lefty levels, it's wrongfully used as an attack on Christianity. Because people nitpick this shit out of these this stuff. When in reality, you could take Darwinian evolution and apply it in so many interesting ways. Okay, hold on. Try and get a chair, nigga. Ugh, it's like chunky cum, but with cinnamon sprinkles all over it. I mean, let me. Get something in my mouth. Mmm. Mmm. Take, for example, the fact that evolution is seen as survival of the fittest. That's not the complete equation. That's just, again, materialists and atheist cult and lefties nitpicking the shit out of Marxist, postmodernist, university cult. They're just nitpicking the shit out of Darwinian viewpoints. When Darwin also took into account the fact that it's ultimately the most persistent, the most I guess bold of species that end up surviving. The ones that struggle, the ones that fight, the ones that ultimately win out because they persevere the most out of everyone else. Those are the species that win out. And it makes sense. And it's relevant to hear for white guys and everyone else that is developing somewhat of a victim complex is the way the political construct is moving because in real life those that persevere ultimately survive in some way shape or form that is what survival is all about perseverance and no other group epitomizes that more than the Aryans of course, but now we gotta deconstruct their survivalist methods as medic, when really it's a lot more than that. And I realize now that even in times like this, it is always possible to find in stories a hero, someone to actually look up to, even if it's in the lowest common denominator. Otaku's start off otakus not by seeing a video game or anime or, or any of those kind of characters, manga characters too that are socially awkward perverts who are cucks no, they start off as little kids watching characters that represent kings the outgoing character the RPG hero he may not be an extrovert, he may be an introvert, and 
but because he never gives up, he persists. Because he's noble. That's kind of what sucks you in, right? You get that, but then puberty happens, and you're indoctrinated into wanting to be the sociopath or the pathetic cuck. You go from kings to cucks. That is fucking stupid. I don't care, because even now we have so many characters that are being written that are awesome, noble people that they don't give up. They they're brave, they're courageous, they're protectors. And they very much are good guys, not anti heroes, not awkward male protagonists, which do have their roles. But certainly not the roles that they're being used in now as sort of deconstructors turning us from kings to cucks. Being a king is no longer a cool thing. Being a cuck, that's what's up now. So, about to get my girl a strap on and finish my fucking meal. This is Mr. Wonka 7 and suck my dick.